This week on Ag Week TV, NDSU is opening a sophisticated new veterinary diagnostic lab. I'm Michelle Rook. Midwest dairy states continue to try to attract new dairy processing plants. I'll have the story coming up. So Shauna, what do you think of these ones? Those are looking good. Find out why farmers are burying underwear in their fields. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. The dairy industry has been making a strong comeback in parts of South Dakota and Minnesota. South Dakota has been recruiting new dairies from places like California and Europe. In fact, efforts to bring more dairy operations to the I-29 corridor have been so successful, there's a milk surplus. Now there's a need for more dairy processing infrastructure. Michelle Rook reports from the World Dairy Expo. Midwest dairy states are facing a processing deficit and are here at the World Dairy Expo trying to recruit new dairy processing plants. After years of having a milk deficit in South Dakota, the state is facing a surplus. Fewer cows are making more milk and we've added enough cows in the state of South Dakota. We, we've filled our dairy processing plants today. So World Dairy Expo was another recruitment trip for the state. What we're trying to do now is find alternative methods of processors coming into the state of South Dakota. Beyond finding the right site, the biggest challenge is the high cost to build. It is very expensive. I mean, when you're talking $200 million for a plant or higher, it, it's, it, it takes time. In the meantime, there are existing processors expanding within the region. We're finally in the process of growing our plant in Sanborn, Iowa, uh, more than doubling the capacity there. And he says that's far less costly than building new. We can maybe expand uh, Sanborn for $20 million or maybe less. Producers admit processing expansion can be a bit of a chicken and egg proposition. They need the milk and they need to be able to market the finished product. So there's a lot of moving pieces. However, he says it's necessary for the future of the entire dairy industry. In Madison, Wisconsin, I'm Michelle Work reporting for Ag Week. A central Minnesota dairy farm is adding value to its operation with the help of family. Jerry Jennison added a creamery at the farm and started making and selling cheese with his wife and daughters. Jonathan Knudsen has more. This Minnesota farm family is very good at milking cows. It's also getting really good at making cheese. So Redhead Creamery, it seemed like a, an obvious name for us. My three sisters, all with red hair, it's especially really fun when we're all at one event together and people see all the redheads together representing a company. They milk 185 cows. Some of their milk is used for their cheese. Lisa's passion for making cheese led her back to the farm after college. Jerry Jennison says adding value to their dairy operation by making and selling cheese with his wife and daughters is a lot of fun. And how many people ever get a chance to have their child come home to work with you? And uh, we never, never doubted that we would do whatever we could to try to make that happen. They have a state inspected cheese plant on their property. Some of their cheese is sold in a small restaurant and retail store at the farm. We're foodies. We love food. And so we, we bring people from, you know, as close as our next door neighbors to people that um, live in Florida or um, Texas. We get a lot of out-of-state visitors and a lot of metro area visitors as well. Adding value is so important in egg. So is having fun. This family business is doing both. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. They have about 15 full and part-time employees. You can check them out at redheadcreamery.com. NDSU has an impressive veterinary diagnostic lab opening this month. The $18 million lab is a frontline defense to protect the region's livestock industry from disease threats. Lab director Brett Webb says the new facility just west of I-29 on 19th Avenue fits in well with other animal ag facilities west of the campus. Webb says the lab offers 100 different tests. The staff does up to 80,000 tests a year. It provides surveillance and rapid diagnosis of diseases or toxins in feed that can have big impacts on producers. Really having this facility that's um, set up appropriately 
uh, it's efficient and we can work with a lot of those disease agents safely is going to be pretty amazing. We're really close to the rest of our animal research units here uh, along 19th Avenue, so it really fits in nicely with the rest of the livestock research we're doing. They get samples in from across the region and, and in some cases across the country. One of the things I think it's particularly known for is the toxicology work that they do here. When there's toxicology work to be done in livestock, this is probably one of the premier labs that people across the country look to. The lab has four faculty with about 16 part-time staff. Nearly half the budget comes from testing fees and grants. The lab replaces a smaller one in Van Ness Hall on the main campus. An NDSU engineer is studying a high-tech probe that could someday be deployed on drones to scout crops for disease and insects more efficiently. NDSU is working with a tech company to develop the probe. Currently, the probe is about three feet long and is held by a crop scout walking through a field. John Nowatsky works with the drone program at NDSU. He hopes it can be made small enough to put on a drone for faster aerial data collection. What constitutes um, success with it is whether, from a technological point of view, can we make it small enough to mount it on a drone. And in order to do that, we're going to have to make it lighter. Nowatsky has applied for a $50,000 state grant for more research. It would be matched by the company that developed the probe. Ahead on Ag Week TV, a Minnesota grower is raising popcorn that you don't even have to take off the cob. My name is Joel Kaler, owner-operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgerwood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called the Cornstalk Guide. It's made out of UHMW, ultra-high molecular weight poly, which is extremely durable. Typically what you'll see on corn heads is the idler chain in the sprocket sticks out. We attach to the side of a snout. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. For a limited time, Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, is offering 0% financing for 60 months for qualified customers on a large portion of our used combines inventory. For a complete list of our best used combine deals, visit combine17.com or contact your local Titan Machinery store. In addition to long-term 0% financing, Titan Machinery is also offering 12 months free full machine warranty on select late model used Case IH combines. Don't delay. Go to combine17.com or call your local Titan Machinery dealership before the program ends. Introducing the new Challenger 1000 series, tractors unlike any other manufactured by Agco. Redefining what a wheel tractor is capable of when it comes to wheel slip, power to ground, and fuel economy. Today, it's not enough just to be tough. You've got to be smarter than everyone else, too. Contact your Challenger dealer today to get in the seat of the new Challenger 1000. Superior engineering, superior performance, superior productivity. The next generation of tractors from your Challenger dealer. Superior Grain Equipment offers storage and drying solutions designed for your grain handling needs. Mixed flow grain dryers from Superior offer even heating to reduce heat stress cracking so you get higher quality grain, higher test weights, and better prices. Plus, they use half the energy of conventional screen dryers. Experience cost savings and Superior Grain Conditioning. Make the Superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. I'm one pony, I'm 30, I'm 30, I'm 55, I'm once around the block, 212, five right here, now I have them, times up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. The U.S. is the largest producer of popcorn in the world. It's typically raised in states like Kentucky, Iowa, and Illinois. But a Minnesota couple is raising a unique variety that pops right off the cob. Colton Gehring raises wheat and corn near Purley, but he and his wife Katie also grow a special variety of popcorn in a two-acre garden in their yard. They do it as a hobby and call it Farmer's Gold Popcorn. They sell it at a few locations in Fargo, as well as three other stores in surrounding states. They say they're selling it as a novelty, not just eating popcorn, so people can see how it grows and pops right off the cob. We get a lot of questions like, how do you guys glue the, glue the kernels on? You know, and, and it's, it's just one of those things that nobody, 
sees it on the cob. They see it loose kernels in the in the stores, and that's just what they're used to. They don't know uh, where it comes from. You just don't see it like that, and uh, it's it's definitely a fun to throw it in there and show the kids, and and even the adults get a kick out of it. The popcorn is also available online at FarmersGoldPopcorn.com. It's harvest time, and one group is doing lots of good with the fruits of their labor. Jason Hibbs has the story from Devil's Lake, North Dakota. A wise man once said, Whatsoever a person sow, that shall he also reap. I don't even know if I can pick this up. Uh, Shay, could you help me? And students at Lake Region State College's Precision Ag Program have been reaping and sowing all semester. I did not know that at first. I just thought we were planting a garden. Grafton sophomore Jossie Nelson wasn't sure what they'd be doing with all the produce they picked, but now... I think about that all the time. It's almost all she thinks about. It's not just for the class, it's not just for a credit, it's we're helping the community and helping one in need. They've literally brought tons of produce in. Hope Center manager Katie Fitch says it's these students who've kept her food pantry stocked trip after trip. And this is the good stuff. It's fresh and healthy. When the college pulls up on 3rd Street in the middle of downtown with a truckload of corn, you know, every once in a while, you know, word gets out around town and so people start to know about that. And not just that you can get help if you need it, but that you can give. It's really gotten out that, oh gosh, if you've got extra produce from your backyard to, you know, your field, you can bring it into the Hope Center. She says after hearing about the students, many people who had never given before were so inspired that they've become regular donors. And when Jossie is finished with the two-year program at the end of this school year, she wants to go back to her hometown, grow a garden, and partner with her local food pantry. This program just has helped me open up my eyes and what I can do. It is true. We reap what we sow. And here, there's a harvest of hope. Every farmer has an effect on the world. And there's plenty to go around. The program's director says the 41 acres of field corn they grew will be sold and likely used for livestock feed. Coming up on Ag Week TV, see why some farmers are putting tidy whities in their fields. But first, your agri weather forecast. How long will the above average October temperatures stay around? Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. BotLink helps you quickly capture drone data, distribute it to trade tools, and respond to changing conditions in real time. Capture, process, and inspect aerial imagery from your fields to fix potential issues like flooding, nutrient deficiencies, or insect damage. Easily upload drone imagery to our cloud-based software to create valuable, high-definition maps that will help save you time and make smarter business decisions to save you money. Minwest Bank knows the business of ag. That's where our roots are. We have a commitment to agriculture and believe in the farming families in our communities. We salute these doers. Your dedication to the land powered by financial resources is what gets things done, now and into the future. Turn to Minwest Bank, where we understand farming and can keep you and your operation going strong. Doers, welcome. Getting better yields is your priority. Helping you maintain your land is ours. Unleash the groundbreaking performance of the Wolverine Extreme. The patented design of the Wolverine Extreme replaces the need for bulldozers, land scrapers, and graders to create and maintain ditches, waterways, and terraces. By scraping and spreading soil in a single operation, the Wolverine Extreme does the job of multiple pieces of equipment three times faster. We can move about 750 yards of dirt an hour, which is far and above uh, the efficiency of anything else in the market. The kicker shaft chews up the soil 
and then the impeller spreads it anywhere from 10 to 150 feet on either side of the machine. One of our biggest features is the auto clutch. That front beater isn't going to you know, just hammer on things. That clutch will pop and you're going to have a, a well-protected driveline. The Wolverine Extreme sets a new standard in ditcher performance. Unleash the groundbreaking performance of the Wolverine Extreme. Call Dynamic Ditchers today to schedule a free demo. Weather portion of Ag Week now. It's really peak harvest season across the upper Midwest, Northern Plains area, and some places finishing up. So drier weather in the forecast is actually, for the most part, good news. Generally speaking, it's going to remain mild. There will be a few frosts. There will be a few freezes, more north than south, but we'll gradually get that. But I don't see any unusually cool weather settling in at all. And I also don't really see, for the next several weeks, any legitimate on set of early winter conditions. It does look like, now there can always be a surprise, but it does look like as we go through the end of October and probably the first middle part of Mo November, maybe through much of November, kind of an absence of real snow, snowy type weather in uh, the Northern Plains Upper Midwest region. Pattern for this week, there's a kind of a meandering jet stream, fairly high amplitude, wave of uh, low pressure will be moving out. It's going to be taking cool weather with it. So by the time we get to midweek, milder weather will be building back into the plains and it will be replaced by another low pressure trough. This one looks fairly deep. It'll be more unseasonably cool in the south with this pattern coming through next weekend, but there might even be some temps down in the 40s and 50s into Florida at night, that is. But across the upper Midwest Northern Plains, this will be fairly cool weather, I think, into the weekend. As far as precipitation goes, not very much. Rain showers moving out of the uh, Middle West. These, I don't think, will be terribly, terribly heavy. It may get a little more interesting on the eastern edge of the Corn Belt, uh, but uh, other than that, that system will eventually retreat back to the north. Most of the United States States will have fairly dry weather as we go through this week and there will probably be some bands of lake effect snow coming down out of Hudson Bay by the end of the week in the weekend and some fairly cold air up there and by the end of the week another onslaught of Pacific Northwest moisture. As we go through the second week and now we're talking Halloween and early November we're going to segue into a well it will continue to be a dry pattern. The ups and downs with the jet stream will continue. Might even be a few significant warm days. For the most part, I think Halloween in the Midwest will be fairly comfortable this year. And as far as precipitation and goes, and then the cool weather will retreat uh, temporarily giving us fairly mild weather through the Halloween period. And so things are looking pretty good. And I expect this warmer than average weather by and large to last through the month of November as well. November precipitation is always a little tricky. And it's also a lot less critical unless it falls in the form of snow. Right now, I don't see too much of that. So the overall outlook, drier conditions, generally mild for the next couple of weeks. And I don't see any winter on the horizon, at least not for the next two weeks and probably longer than that. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. Helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have a, a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms, and as a result, uh, more people can eat. Dig, lay, and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to seven feet deep with boot sizes of four to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and controls soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, visit www.crarytilepro.com. 
BotLink helps you quickly capture drone data, distribute it to trade tools, and respond to changing conditions in real time. Capture, process, and inspect aerial imagery from your fields to fix potential issues like flooding, nutrient deficiencies, or insect damage. Easily upload drone imagery to our cloud-based software to create valuable, high-definition maps that will help save you time and make smarter business decisions to save you money. We're excited to bring you the new AgWeek app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your AgWeek news, weather, and the latest episodes of AgWeek TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take AgWeek with you. Download the new AgWeek app today. Welcome back to AgWeek TV. Soil health is a very important topic, especially nowadays. And Abby Wick with NDSU Extension joins us now. She's a soil health specialist. You have a really unique project. Tell us about it. You know, it's, it's always difficult for farmers to measure soil health in their fields. And there are all these tests you can run and numbers you can get, but oftentimes the best test is a visual one. And so we've been burying men's underwear in fields as a measure of soil health. It's called uh, Soil Your Undies, right? The kind of the, the Twitter sensation. It is. So if you look at hashtag Soil Your Undies, you'll find all kinds of stuff from Ontario, from all over the U.S. now, where, where different farmers and also extension people and researchers are burying undies and then digging them up after a couple of months of being in the ground and seeing how, how much they've decomposed from the biological activity in the soil. Not very deep in the ground either, right? Yeah, we just, we put them in about an inch in the ground and because we wanted to capture that surface biological activity where almost everything is happening. And there's a real technique technique to this, Shauna. So <laughs> you lay them flat and then you put the soil back on top of them. And, and the best way to really evaluate the system is to look at a good comparison. So so hopefully we've, we've got some here at the share farm where we've buried them in, I think it's been a year and a half of no-till, and then we buried them in our chisel plow plots just to see if there's a difference. Abby, you're going to dig up the first pair and this one comes in the no-till side. These are actually de pretty decomposed, aren't <laughs> they? They are. You left the outer band out there so you can know where they were, but look at that. Yeah, so this is really, I mean, the microbes will feed on these and they'll, they'll start decomposing this material. Sometimes we actually will pull these out in some of these long-term no-till systems and it will be literally just the band and the stitching. And it's kind of amazing how much, how much decomposition there actually is. So I would think this is probably pretty good for just a year and a half of no-till and being pretty recent into this transition. So now in the chisel plow field, we're going to dig these ones up and you can already see how there's, there's not as much residue on the surface. So that's kind of a, a difference between the two the two systems. And so there's actually, there's quite a bit less decomposition and breakdown of the undies. Yeah, there's a big difference, isn't there? So this to me tells me that this, that this soil is not as biologically active and, and um, that would have impacts for, for nutrient cycling efficiency and all those aspects that we look for in soil health that are biologically driven. You can really see a big difference between the no-till and the conventional till. I think so. After just a year and a half of, of reducing tillage, and we did incorporate some cover crops into the system, that, that that's really jump-started the biology in, in the soils and, and helped them decompose. Abby, thanks for uh, letting us come out and check out your underwear here today. <laughs> Anytime, Sean. I got them buried all over the state. <laughs> A nonprofit missions organization is celebrating 60 years. Steer Incorporated is based in Bismarck. It works with about 1,000 farmers and ranchers in several states to help them support missions through ag related projects. Keith Cost is the executive director of Steer. He says it works well for producers because they are equity rich and might not have the cash to write out a check to support a missionary. That's where steer comes in because they can take a couple cows and run it with their herd and they hardly notice it. And when it comes time to sell, they just sell the average of their calves and they have the check made out at the sale barn to steer so it doesn't enter into their account and they help support missions and they could never write that check out themselves. Steer has programs for feeder cattle, crops, sheep, hogs and dairy. Still ahead on AgWeek TV, a North Dakota rancher is honored for his conservation work. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgerwood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called the Cornstalk Guide. It's made out of UHMW, ultra high molecular weight poly, which is extremely durable. Typically what you'll see on corn heads is the idler chain in the sprocket sticks out. 
We attach to the side of a snout. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. The future of ceramic nozzle technology is here today with the Total Ag Air Induction Turbo Nozzle, the only ceramic triple spray nozzle on the market. Works with all sprayers for better weed control and wheel tracks. They could be the last spray nozzles you'll ever need. I'm really impressed with them. It just amazes me how they work so well. Contact Total Ag by phone or visit TotalAg.com. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable, and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. Egg Week TV, presented by Kaler Farms. A ranching family from Fort Rice, North Dakota, has won the Leopold Conservation Award. Ken and Bonnie Miller were nominated by the Morton County Soil Conservation District. The Millers use a variety of techniques, including cover crops, crop rotation, and no-till. Ken Miller says conservation has always been part of their operation. Healing the land, regenerating the land, I mean, with conserving the land, uh, improving it. Uh, again, with the, the practice we've been doing, you can heal the land very quickly and uh, do it very economically, too. The award is given in honor of renowned conservationist Aldo Leopold. It comes with a $10,000 prize. This week's photo of the week comes from John Munson of Hatton, North Dakota. What a beautiful shot. It was taken as the sun was going down on a day he was combining pinto beans. We'd love to see your ag photos on our show. Email it along with a description to photos at agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Agweek TV. For all your ag news, go to agweek.com and be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. See you next week.